Hello everyone, today's banjo tidbit is a little bit different than what we typically do here. This one is about reading chord charts and understanding the Nashville number system, which if you don't already know this, the Nashville number system and using a chord chart is the standard way of conveying information in bluegrass music, not so much standard notation or tablature. It's all about the chord charts. So they will look a little something like this. If you um, are going to the studio or joining in a new band, you'll most likely be expected to be able to read these. So let's get started. It's super easy and you'll have it in no time. Here's one of the charts we used last week in our recording session. This is pretty standard looking. When a bluegrass band is working up or recording new material, it is pretty much expected that each individual instrumentalist will be improvising their solos. What is important to be structured and consistent about is the form of the song, and by that I mean the chord structure and any arrangement variation on that. But I know that looking at a chart like that feels really overwhelming and it looks like there's a lot going on. Um, so we'll just break it down and we'll start with an explanation of the Nashville number system. There are seven notes in the scale, as most of you all know, and the Nashville number system assigns a number to each note beginning with the key note being number one. Here's what each note's number would be if we were playing in the key of A. I'm sure you've heard people referring to a 1-4-5 chord progression, which is very standard in bluegrass. So if you know that you're in the key of A and someone says it's a 1-4-5 chord progression, this is how you figure out that it's A, D, and E. So if I were looking at this little mini chart here and I knew that it was the key of A, I'd know that it would be A, 2, three, four, D, two, three, four, E, two, three, four. Yes, I know, my chord wheel is absolutely adorable. Thanks for noticing. So you can change keys that you're playing a song in and the chord progression, say it's a one, four, five chord progression, is going to stay the same. The only thing that changes are the chords associated with those numbers. So if we switched over and moved to the key of G, we'll have the one chord is going to be G, the four chord is going to be C, and the five chord is going to be D. So now we can look at the same exact chord chart, and if we're told that we're playing whatever tune this is in the key of G, we'll know that the one, four, five means G, C, and D, whereas for the key of A, it meant A, D, and E. So that's pretty easy. You can make yourself one of those adorable little wheels like I did and practice coming up with chord progressions and then practice moving them around key to key. And that would be probably the best way to internalize the what the numbers mean in different keys. You know, you kind of want to be able to do it on the fly and not have to carry around your little wheel. Um, and now we'll just talk a little bit about different symbols that you see on charts that indicate different meanings. And I will add that there really is nothing official about these symbols. Honestly, everyone kind of has their own like chicken scratch for these, but these ones that I'll show you are, you know, the ones that I've seen commonly coming from many different people. And so it's a pretty safe bet to say that these are the meanings that you can expect. A little M next to a number means the minor version of that chord. Likewise, sometimes people put a little minus sign, and that's what I usually use, and that also means a minor version of that chord. A diamond means a hard stop, so everyone in the band comes to a stop. Let's try this slightly more complicated chord progression in a couple different keys. What we have is one, one, three minor, three minor, four, five, stop on one. Let's try this chord progression in the key of G. In that case, the one would be G, the three would be B, the four would be C and the five would be D, and the progression would sound like this. Moving it up to the key of C, the one is C, the three is E, the four is F, and the five is G, and it would sound like this. And now a fair word of warning for you. There are key signatures that this process is not 100% accurate for, and that's because they have flats within the scale, and this is already more theory than we want to take on today. We're not going to go there today, and the reality is it's not likely to come up 
very often in a bluegrass context anyway. Um, two keys that are fairly common in bluegrass, and it may come up for you in, would be the key of F and the key of B flat. So if you are, you know, experimenting with progressions in different keys, just be warned that if you try F and B flat, you're going to have to do a little more research um, or wait for a future lesson about how to find um, the flats in that, that uh, key signature. Lastly, you might get the key and the BPM written at the top of the page. It's not always there, but if the chart writer is super organized, sometimes they'll put it there, and I think musicians always do appreciate that. Well, now you know how to read charts, and you know how to use the Nashville number system, so I thought I'd make a little game exercise for you. I've charted out a tune that we have done recently in a banjo tidbit, but I just didn't put the name at the top, so... You can play through this tune and let me know what you think it is. I put the key at the top. The key is accurate. You can ignore the BPM. Um, you play it at whatever tempo you want. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I sure do appreciate all you patrons.